A lot of us rely on a morning cup of coffee, or several morning cups of coffee, to get us going. But the taste and quality of that coffee might not stay the same forever. Climate change has the potential to not only shift where and how we grow coffee in the future, but affect whether it can be grown at all. Whether you're a coffee aficionado who obsesses over acidity, aroma, and brew method, or you hastily chug some corner store instant blend on the go, climate change means bad news for your beans. There are lots of different blends and styles of coffee, but we usually just drink two types. The most famous is Coffea Arabica. The other is its less celebrated cousin, Coffea Canefera, also known as Robusta. Most of us sip Arabica for our daily cup of joe, but if you get your fix from instant coffee, it's probably Robusta, which is not considered quite as tasty. The Arabica coffee plant is pretty particular. It grows best in wet and cool mountain regions. Unfortunately for Arabica and for us, climate change is bringing a slew of problems to those higher altitude coffee growing areas. That's especially true in places where Arabica Arabica coffee grows wild in the humid, shady mountain forests of Ethiopia and South Sudan. The genetic diversity found in these wild plants might hold the key to making coffee more resilient to climate and disease in the future. But climate change is increasing temperatures and shortening wet seasons in these areas. That makes the outlook not so good for wild coffee forests. By 2088, we could see a 50 to 80 percent drop in Arabica populations, which could be enough to land them on the endangered list. Combine that with deforestation and this special species of bean could be at greater risk of extinction. While Robusta is definitely more, well, robust when it comes to environmental changes, climate change is shrinking its available growing range, too. And as temperatures rise, both species are being hit harder by pests, like the coffee berry borer. This species of bark beetle is a serious enemy of coffee plants. It used to attack only plants growing below certain elevations. That minimized its impact since coffee is grown at high altitudes. But with hotter weather, this beetle is expanding its range into higher ground and appearing in coffee plantations. Warmer weather is also encouraging a number of fungus species to move into Arabica and Robusta territory. One of the most notorious is coffee rust, which turns the leaves a rusty orange. When coffee rust arrived in Sri Lanka in the 19th century, it wiped out the entire industry in 10 years. Coffee rust also followed the coffee industry to Central and South America, where higher heat and humidity due to climate change made plantations vulnerable to infections. In a short time, the fungus caused billions of dollars in damage and lost profits. And because climate change is shrinking coffee growing habitat, there are fewer places left for coffee growers to flee this fungus and other diseases. Even if we can keep farming Arabica in the future, lower quality growing environments might negatively impact flavor, literally leaving a bitter taste in your mouth. The amount of shade and differences in microclimates change the look, smell, and taste of coffee beans. The best specialty coffee comes from natural, shady, coffee-producing forests. Since Arabica grown under a high sun exposure takes a hit, in terms of bean quality. Also, in healthy coffee-producing forests, higher diversity in insect and orchid species appears to play a role in coffee quality. In fact, coffee connoisseurs can differentiate between coffees grown in different elevations and conditions, sort of like how some sommeliers can taste variations in wine. And the bad news for beans isn't just a downer for coffee snobs. Climate change is expected to make a dent all across this multi-billion dollar sector and on the hundred million coffee farmers around the world. But there is some hope. Researchers are looking into other coffee species that might be more resilient than Arabica and Robusta. In fact, there are 124 known wild coffee species growing across the world, from tropical Africa to Australasia, and many are already used locally to make a morning cup of joe. One especially promising species is Coffea stenophylla. This bean tastes similar to Arabica, and it can be grown at higher temperatures. Stenophylla and a number of other wild species have important characteristics related to heat, drought, pest, and disease tolerance. Unfortunately, 60% percent of all wild coffee species could also be at risk of extinction. That's mainly because we're destroying the forests where they are found to make room for agriculture, livestock, farming, and new settlements. In addition, some wild species are found in high-conflict regions, which presents additional challenges. So even though many of us take for granted that coffee is a reliable part of our day, it may not be in the future. As if we needed another reason to get serious about climate change. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow, and thanks, as always, to our patrons for helping us make it happen. Happen. We cannot buy you a coffee to say thanks, but we do have some neat perks available, like our new behind-the-scenes podcast. If you're interested, you can get started at patreon.com slash scishow. 